Ugh, this is getting... It's just not gonna protect. Future Sight can miss. Yeah, we're just f then, actually. See you, buddy. Come on! I think it's actually just over. Get the f*** out of here, Forges! Who's dodging now, bitch?! Uh, let's go over really quick what happened yesterday, because I think it's always good to do a little bit of analysis when something like this happens, because we did almost wipe. So I guess to recap really quick, if you weren't there for it, this floor just almost wiped us. And I think what bothers me about what happened yesterday is there is so many layers of mistakes that led to what happened. Basically, um, you can kind of break these things down into like preparation and execution and what bothers me is that there were multiple mistakes in both um, and I can't have that happen again uh, if we're at this point in the game the, this game does not allow you these kinds of mistakes that often um, so there was a couple things so in preparation basically what we said is we said uh, this has double team but Corviknight walls it Corviknight can heal itself and Corviknight has defog to neutralize the double team on it right the problem was that I didn't really think about how Roost PP matched up with Double Team PP. Um, there was another small mistake in preparation that was actually insanely impactful, and it's that um, I last minute gave this a Chestoberry because I thought it might be switching into uh, Kangaskhan Sing, which in hindsight could have never happened because Kangaskhan saw a kill on Rapidash, so this item was useless. If this was a Lepa Berry, we would have been fine because we would have had more Roost PP. If we have five more Roosts in that situation, it's no problem at all. The issue is that as soon as the Florges was out, because I didn't think about this beforehand, and then when the Florges was out, I panicked and didn't stop to think. And instead of just going into the Pokedex here and looking at Double Team's PP, which is the way you get this information reliably, and then also realizing the game knowledge thing that until yesterday I wasn't even like fully aware of. I'd heard of this, but I just it wasn't at the forefront of my mind. Is the way that PP in this game is distributed is that the first slot of the Pokemon is PP maxed and the rest is not. So I just didn't realize that Double Team was 15 PP. I read a bunch of random numbers in chat. I thought, okay, I'm f***ed, and I didn't bother to look it up. So I was like, okay, I don't have enough Defog PP to deal with this. I need to start doing damage now. Not realizing that I had enough defog PP. I had 50. So notice, in the situation that we almost wiped and Florges was at plus 5 evasion, and Corviknight had 5 defogs left. But Corviknight was too low HP to defog neutralize the actual double teams. So I realized too late. The second issue was also PP related, is that I didn't actually count any Moonblast PP. And this led to me not realizing what my win condition in the fight was. When this Corviknight was low, I didn't have the opportunity to defog anymore. I thought stalling out Moonblast with Musharna was no longer my win condition because he would probably have too many left because I just didn't bother to count. So I thought the only way for me to get out was to somehow hit through the evasion and get damage in, right? Um which led to me sacrificing these two. Because I was like, okay, I need to hit a Heavy Slam with Steelix, I need to somehow hit a Fire Lash with Rapidash, because the only way I get out is if I maybe get this defense drop, maybe Rapidash actually ends up hitting twice. Uh, and if I don't, then uh, with the defense drop, maybe if Halucha or uh, Barraskewed I get lucky, I can kill it. Not, re not realizing that my win condition was actually stalling it out of Moonblast PP, which is what ended up happening. Now... Steelix ended up taking four more Moon Blasts, I think, three or four, which was super relevant. Um, because I think if it had those PP, I think I didn't have enough... Because I was out of Moonlights when it started using Psychics, and if it had two or three more Moon Blasts there, we would have been f***ed. Because if it only has Psychics left, but Musharna has no HP left, we're still f***ed. Right? Because this is too low, this dies, and then these two die. Realistically, I think... With, like, pivoting between these two to have Rapidash take two, I think maybe three more Moon Blasts. Have this take as many Moon Blasts as it could before dying, and then going to Musharna, I think I maybe have to dodge, like, one additional crit for this to work with zero deaths. So let's move on. 
to the next fight. Breeder Pat. Let's do this. All right. Custep area explosion, sturdy pseudo -udo. We shall fake out to break the sturdy. We're always baiting earthquake slow kill here. So we go into Halucha. Halucha has a life orb. He's going to kill this with close combat. Show a fast kill on every mon on this guy's team. So the only thing he can go to is Garbodor. And we're pre-damaged perfectly to always be dead to gunk shot after this close combat drop. Plus the life orb recoil. Perfect. So this can only be gunk shot. He can't explode. So we're safe to go back to Togi. Perfect. Now we go back to Halucha on this drain punch. And then we encore the drain punch. Fake out there is a complete punt because this has weak armor. And then this is faster than Halucha. Switch to Musharna on the Strange Punch. We need to avoid a double crit right now. Okay. I think we're good. And now he has to Drain Punch one more time. 110 is perfect. No kills from try attack at that HP. This is always Porygon 2 because it sees a kill. He downloads attack. That's really important. This is why we went for Musharna uh, instead of anything else to kill this Garbodor. We're going to go into Ledian. Why Ledian over Halucha? Because Ledian has one thing that Halucha doesn't. Which you will see in a second. We're going to encore this Dark Pulse. Tailwind. He has to Dark Pulse one more time after this. Tailwind is up. Switch to Surfetched. Now Black Belt 73. Surfetched kills the rest of the team. I have two more turns of Tailwind. One of them is going to be used on this Porygon. I see fast kill with everything, so it just goes in team order. Tailwind Peter's out. Final Pokemon is Colossal, which is slower than me. Easy peasy. I didn't even need the six Mon. I had this here in case. Uh, Musharna got double crit and was in tri-attack range for Porygon. I can go this, confirm the Dark Pulse, and then continue the line. We have some frag data for this run now. So Torterra got 76. I think, is is there any way to sort by how many frags everything got? Um, Centiscorch pretty far ahead with 53. Um, and Staraptor very closely chasing Torterra with 67. Staraptor frags are going to grow a lot less now that we have Halucha, though, because pretty much everything that gets killed by Staraptor is probably done better by Halucha. Okay, I gotta go set up for D&D. Thanks for watching. Good evening, gamers. I did, uh, I was supposed to do cardio today, but I forgot. Okay, I gotta make sure I don't accidentally run into the trainer who's guarding the Safari Zone. Okay, so that's the breeder up there who's guarding Safari Zone. Okay, that's pretty easy. And this should be cool trainer Gustavo. Okay, we should be good. All right, Chandy, get your bread. Okay, so we should be able to Mystical Fire, lower special attack. I'd like to keep my Lumberry if possible. Unfortunate. Kill with Overheat, bait fast kill from Hydreigon. I guess this means I have more HP for Conkolder, which is also fun.
And it's always fast kill from Hydreigon anyway, so... I outspeed everything else. Perfect. Literally, no matter what this Hydreigon does this turn, Hawlucha can tank any crits, anything, and can just outspeed and kill with close combat. Wonderful. We have Black Belt, this always kills. Dude, me first Dragon Pulse would go crazy here. This should be Conkholder. Nice slow kill with Ice Punch. Yeah, I remember my net. <laughs> Let's go back to Chandy. He kind of full walls this. This is just fighting type moves and Ice Punch. We can get Perma Frozen here if we get unlucky, but... Pretty fictional if you ask me. It's the best move to use here. Probably Heat Wave, huh? For the burn chance and it's highest damage other than Overheat. It's uh, Iron Fist, not um, Guts. I think none of my moves thaw. This is guaranteed 3 to KO. Okay. All fire moves thaw. I guess I got lucky there. You're spared for now, chatter. This should be jealous and random move. Yeah, Scald and Hex both kill. So, we just gotta confirm Hex from this, because we can't switch this into Scald. Um, but we can very safely just go into Electrode. And if I read the AI doc right, he can never Strength Sap on full HP. So he shouldn't be able to Strength Sap this Electrode. I think I might also be dead to Hex if this burns or whatever. Alright, just Volt Switch out. No overlap there. That's fine. So we go here on this, what should be a guaranteed Hex or Toxic. Cool. The reason I want this to be Sharpedo... ...is that we want to bait slow kill from... Um, Scrafty, so it can't Dragon Dance. Is there any reason not to flip turn? <clears throat> this has Moxie, Poison Gem. I'm faster. I don't need the damage and I take extra life orb recoil, but fuck it. Should always be safe. Yeah, this is just slow kill, close combat every single time, or Poison Jab. I think I can always CC with Raptor now, actually. It doesn't matter. 36 minimum. Unboosted Raptor CC is 75, yeah. Never did a close combat crit here. Never did a poison jab crit poison. It's fine. I'll just brave bird because I know it always kills. I'm faster, he didn't D dance. I never died a recoil. Free! Completely free. Alright. Next! 
Ooh, Fantasy. a sand trainer. Surely there's a fight where Holucha leads and just me first, like Dragon Claws, a motherfucker. No, dual chop from Garg Shop, Holy Cove. Yeah, maybe that's what I was thinking. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we should be good. Have to make very sure that this has an Aspir Berry. Okay, it's the only thing that really matters here. You can me first your own Pokemon in doubles, right? It's like every every me first move you use has stab, except if it's if it's already stabbed, do you also get stab bonus on it? It's probably why I body pressed it so much on Mill Tank. Yeah, I was actually surprised by that. All right, we're in Overgrow. Energy Ball always kills. This should bait exactly Stoutland. Sand Rush, Retaliate. This is random move. Worst case is play rough. Everything else is fine. Chandy's been coming alive today. How do I want to kill this? Just heat wave into overheat. It's fine. <laughs> this is when I get crit burn, when it just doesn't matter at all. We can think about the line a little bit here. No, there's nothing to think about. You don't want to get additional damage on Magnazone. Let's just um, stick to the line. Okay, this should never be T-Tar because I'm faster and um, Drake's ult sees fast kill. Sand Rush, Dragon Gym, Drake's ult incoming with fucking Bolt Beak. This thing is a monster. We had to bring four slots to deal with this. So this is completely random move. Torterra can never get crit. That's fine. Citrus to be healthy for Titar. Okay, so this can only be exactly Dragon Rush, I think. Yep. Go to the fair. This is fine. I, I didn't need a pre damage. It's always Bolt Peak anyway, right? It's not like it has like overlapping rolls with Earthquake or whatever. So this is only ever Bolt Beak. You know what? I don't think I needed Clefable at all. Because if he goes non-Dragon move, I just wait for a turn. Until he uses the Dragon move, and then just go Magnazone on the f***ing Dragon Rush. I overcooked this a little bit. It doesn't really matter. Okay, never Earthquake, right? Yeah, okay. Citrus for crit. Okay. And now this is always Earthquake. And exactly only Earthquake. So we're going to go into this frozen chicken. It's, it just feels so wrong. <laughs> Boom. Aspire Berry immediately triggers, giving us Unburden. The Earthquakes. Okay. 
We encore. Phoenix has thawed and is now ready to fly. And you know what? Why not give him a little bit of this? I think this kills. Not quite. He can't switch because I have a 2 hit KO on Tyranitar. And that's the only thing he has left. If you have fast 2 hit KO or slow 1 hit KO, they don't switch. Encore didn't end, right? Beautiful. Another one for the Halucha data. This thing is so broken, bro. It's actually crazy. I genuinely think if anything has Earthquake on an enemy team, that's like, or f***ing a fighting move, you immediately have an opening and do some crazy sh with this. Okay, I, I cannot kill this with close combat because it has a Chobble Berry. You can't crit Torterra anyway. And Giga Drain Woodhammer just kills. But I take two stone edges. I think I actually have to do a pivot. Let's go Torterra and assess the roll, because I think there's some times where it's just fine if he low rolls this, or if he misses, or if he counters. I think I'm almost always- I think Magnazone switch is... really bad. If I have to super steer, I can probably go Magnazone, try to not get crit, and then... Encore Earthquake or something. Counter. Unlucky. Pretty high roll. No, that was a medium roll. Okay, I'm at 76. Giga Drain recovery is minimum 33. Why did I think this was ever gonna work? I think Synth potentially makes my position just worse. Oh my god, I'm gonna lose my Torterra here. Go to 37. <clears throat> Which means if I min rolled Giga Drain, always dead to recoil. This was never gonna work, actually. Wait, I think I can do it. I think I have it. Really good heal. 47. I'm safe. I heal minimum 33. Max roll stone edge is 72. Earthquake kills after this Giga Drain. Yeah, I didn't think about double Giga Drain into Earthquake. I think. Yeah, we're safe. He pursued it. <laughs> oh, okay. Alright, chat's back on. That felt a lot better to do without chat. Oh, it sucks so much too, because like I realized way too late that I didn't need Clefable at all. Cause if I if I switch into non-dragon move with Torterra. Cause when I, I I didn't need to go Clefable at all, right? If when he used the dragon move, I could have just gone Magnazone. And confirmed Earthquake. If he hadn't used, if he'd used Earthquake or Bolt Beak, I just stay in and click synth. Right? For a turn. And then I'm in the same position. Plus more HP. And then I'm, yeah, and then I'm again confirming non-dragon gym dragon move and I just go Magnazone and then, yeah. And then I would have had a free slot to go for the, <clears throat> for the T-Tar, which probably would have been like Seismitoad or some shit. I don't know. I had a lot of options. Alright, how many more fights to get to Lily Cove? I don't know if I can do... It's three more? I don't know, I can't do it today. Sorry guys. Did a lot of work today. We'll come back to this tomorrow. I'll do these last three fights and Lily Cove rival tomorrow. Uh, good night.